Hello, uh, I am Pat Allen, and we are here today, January the 26th, 2018, to interview a veteran for the Library of Congress. Uh, this is the Veterans History Project, and we are at Cincinnati State College, and uh, this is being done for the Hamilton County and Cincinnati Library in Cincinnati, Ohio and Cincinnati State, uh, uh, this is their branch campus in Middletown, Ohio. And um, I am grateful that uh, James Bird has uh, agreed to be interviewed. And uh, Mr. Bird, I want to th thank you okay. for your service and thank, thank you thank for you. coming here today. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> our cameraman today is uh, Dave Kilman from the, from the college. and. Uh, what should I call you? Should I call you a junior or should I call you a Jim? Jim, I, I, I You prefer Jim? Jim? Yeah. All right, Jim. Uh, before we get into your military service, uh, I think we'll tell the folks that are going to be hearing about you and watching you on this uh, video about yourself. Uh, when and where were you born? Osborne, Ohio. And Osborne, Ohio is really no longer uh, in existence, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's a half of Fairborn right now. They combined the Fairfield and Osborne as one city. And that Main Street was always divided the two. All right. And uh, you told me a, a little story about uh, being in Osborne. You want to tell, tell well, us uh, again? When I was 16 years old, you had to go to the Board of Education to get a work permit. And the man asked me my name and where I lived and everything else. And then he says, where was you born? I said, Osborne. He says, where was you born? I said, Osborne. He said, I know you was born, but where? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was awful strange for Board of Education. There's only a few towns, small towns in 1927 and 30, around they didn't know every one of them, but for some reason it didn't ring a bell with them. All right, uh, so you were born in Osborne, um, and how long did you live there? Well, it wasn't too long because my dad took off, and I wasn't even one years old yet when he took off, and there was. Uh, Four of us at the time, my uh, two brothers, a sister, or two sisters, and uh, we, uh, a friend of my mother's went to Dayton because they knew who he was with, and they asked uh, if she was out of money and she didn't have nothing to buy any food or anything. And he says, well, I'll give her $2, and that's all you'll get from me. So anyhow, the Green County got a hold of that, and they uh, took us out of there and put us in a Green County children's home at that time. And uh, we was in there, and it went, to, had, went through courts there and everything, and uh, some of my uh, my grandmother was going to take my oldest son, that was her first uh, grandson, and then two aunts took one of my sisters and the other, other aunt took the other one there, and there was three of us then left in here in Dayton, and most of those we had never ever played with them or anything until we was about ready to go in service, and then we started getting together a little bit more. Where did where did you go to grade school? Uh, grade school, St. Joseph Orphan's Home. All right. And they had their own uh, up to the eighth grade there. And that was in Dayton? In Dayton, right. And then where did you start high school? The high school was Chaminade. Right. And how long did you go to Chaminade? I went one year there, and I was going to go over to co-op because I wanted to trade and a job. And uh, I sat there for two days waiting for somebody to 
to pick me up uh, to one of the grades or something or one of the different classes, and they didn't do it. And they said, well, we, we ain't got no room for you. Might as well go. So what is I did? So until I got in the service, and they had a classroom for the veterans that uh, didn't uh, finish uh, high school and things like that, they called it USAPI course. In other words, USAP. <laughs> you know, that's where they got that name. So anyhow, I passed it, and they were supposed to send um, a note, a letter to Chaminade, let them know that I finished the high school there. And we were supposed to, they were supposed to call me in or, and supposed to graduate with the class at that particular time, but they never did, never heard from them. And I was uh, now in Centerville, and I didn't have no way back and forth anyhow, and so I never pursued it. Well, let's, so. uh, let, let's talk about your enlistment. Uh, how old were you, and when did you enlist? I enlisted um, when I was 17 years old. And a friend of mine, we was in the painting business together. And he says, well, he says, uh, we're getting where we're going to have to be drafted. And, and you won't get a choice where you're going or anything like that. And uh, he said, if we enlist, we can pick anyone we want. And of course, he's already picked it, I guess. And he said, well, he said, I figured I'm going to, we'd go in the Merchant Marines. And he says, we can. I go to boots camp together and we'd be shipped out together on the same ship. That's what his plans was. Well, I found out since I was only 17 as a minor yet, my mother didn't have the, the right, uh, enough the permission to sign anything, so we had to get a birth certificate. I had to go to Greene County and they had no record of me being born in Greene County. And then they said, well, try Toledo, the Beluca County, where the family was before they moved to Dayton. And then they didn't have it. They said, well, Columbus has gotten all the main birth certificates. And I wrote there, they didn't have it. So I said, well, go back to Greene County and see if they'll look and a little bit harder, and one of the older women there says, well, you're not on record of being born here, but she says, there is a, a little file back here that uh, the doctors made a report of uh, deliveries and things like that to the state of Ohio, and she went through that in a few minutes, and sure enough, they said, yes, my mother gave uh, birth to a baby uh, son and uh, so they said well we can uh, make it from there but the, the name we can't give you a name and I said well 17 years I had James that's what uh, my mother called me and they said well we can't do that and asked them my uh, father's name was Alfred and they said, well, we can't legally give you his name as Alfred Jr., but we can go Jr. We'll make it a Jr. Bird. So they made us a birth certificate out for that, and that's then I turned that into the uh, what you call it, board, and off to uh, Sheepshead Bay. I was headed. Well, when I got in Sheepshead Bay, I, it took a while to look out which uh, barracks he was in. And he already had two months ahead of me, so there was no way I could catch up with him. So he was went off on his own. And then I was off on my own, so we never did see each other after that. But in the records, there's only one person that got killed from Dayton, Ohio. And that was him. Well, what, what, was so your, what, was your, what was your mom's name? Uh, Teresa. Teresa? Yeah. And your dad was James? No, no. Albert? Uh, no, no. Alfred, Alfred Leroy. Alfred Leroy, okay. Right. But they couldn't give me his name or being Alfred Jr. And 
so they gave me the word junior. So the only way I can list is under junior bird. And well, that's what you see the... I'm, I'm looking here at a DD-214 and it says, last name Bird, first name James, and middle name Junior. Right. Uh, well, I took that because of, uh, I wanted to get a record that I was the same person in both wars. Uh huh. So that's the reason I made it my middle name and dropped my real middle name. Where, where did you go to enlist? What city? Oh, in Dayton. Dayton? Yeah. And uh, after you enlisted, uh, where did you go for uh, training? Well, at Sheepshead Bay in, uh, in uh, uh, Maryland. And how long were you at Sheepshead? Uh, not very long because it was getting close to the end of the war. Yeah, the war in Europe was there. And uh, so they, uh, they already put out of there a lot of people that, uh, you know, I guess the Merch Marine or anything, uh, they needed as many people as they can get to bring back the GIs, you know, the equipment and so forth. Right. So I was stuck in there for two years. Uh, but I was already, uh, when I shipped out, which about two weeks later, uh, we went on a Liberty ship and we headed for Panama Canal. All right. And when we were down in Panama Canal, they put a little three inch gun on the back of the uh, ship and they put nine armed guards, uh, two anti aircraft, uh, one on the uh, starboard and the on each side, and there was, wasn't that much, but it was better than nothing. But then they that was started. pretty common for lib for uh, uh, merchant marine ships right. to have some armament. Right, I got some papers on that right. in, in there. So now, when, when was it actually that uh, you left Sheep's Head? I think the 30th of uh, August. Of what year? Of uh, 1945. Okay, and so then. Is that when you went down towards the Panama Canal? Right. And what we, ship were you on? Uh, SS Ben Robinson. Robinson or Robertson? Robertson. Okay. Sure. And uh, go ahead and tell us, uh, did you go through the Panama? Okay, well, before we went through the Panama, uh, well, no, it was after we went through the Panama, they put on two TP, uh, PT boats on it. And they had eight, they had 23 um, crew for the PT boats, and then we had nine armed guard. So technically, with me, as far as the military, we almost had the same amount of military on that ship as we did the crew. The crew is generally on a merchant ship is only 43 people. All right. But eventually, the uh, navy was starting to take over the Liberty ships. And it took 199 people to do the same job we did. So, it took 199 people? Yeah, 199 on there. So that's the difference there. They do it in a big way. But they must have had a lot more guns or stuff like that in there. But, well, on the, uh, on the Ben Robertson, uh, were you on that ship uh, as a merchant man or you weren't on there as a Navy man? <sighs> Well, not really in a way. There was only two of us on there with the uniform in the maritime. Right. We was maritime people under the Coast Guard. But we was mixed with uh, a lot of older people in there that uh, saw other parts in there. And some of them went down with ships and back on the ships again. So uh, that. Uh, being that, I got, if you see in there, I got a Coast Guard discharge, okay? And that's uh, technically which I should be under right now. And I never got a bonus, or the Merchant Seamen's never got a bonus to this. They, uh, uh, they weren't uh, qualified to go to the VA for medical or anything like that. So uh, the United States did put up, I think, two or three 
what they called the Marine Hospitals. And one was, I forget what it was, I, I only went there on the way home, stopped there. And I think it was down in North Carolina or somewhere down in there. And the other one was down near the Gulf Coast, down in there. So I had no way, once I got home, to have anything ever happen, or visit any of those in there. So, so the, when, when you shipped out uh, from Sheep's Head, on the Ben Robertson, did you have any merchant mariners on board that had been in any convoys in the Atlantic? Well, that that I don't sure, know for sure. Um, I were the captain and uh, the uh, what do you call it, uh, the radio man and uh, engineer, of the boiler room or the engine room whether they were mariners or not. All right. I'm not sure of that, and I'm going to do a little bit more looking on that. But uh, when the start of the war, they, uh, when Roosevelt started it, and figured they needed about 500 ships to, for the uh, United States itself. And what they did when the war uh, started there in uh, Germany, Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia in 39, and then they was starting to take Austria, so Churchill said that's all they wanted was Czechoslovakia, but another month or two they was in Australia, and they started there in Prussia and, and so in Poland, and they uh, figured it was just a matter of time to go to, to Russia and uh, of Great Britain. So the United States actually took over all the private ships uh, to handle the troops and things like that. And they, the company still owned them. And they, they like the Grace Lines or things like this, you know, Panamanian Lines. But uh, what they did, eventually they were supposed to, if the war would last a lot longer, they would have had all merit Marines in, in uh, uh, victory ships, in the Liberty ships. And the Navy, uh, we figured the Navy was gonna take over us uh, on there. But when it comes to the signing of the, of Japan surrender there on the Missouri there and uh, just just a month before I got over in the Philippines, because uh, we was heading for Okinawa. And I figured, all of us figured that they wouldn't give up in Okinawa. And if they didn't drop the bombs there, we wouldn't be here today. Because well, they figured at least a million GIs would have got killed going there in Japan. Well, what so, what uh, kind of a ship were you on when you uh, were headed to Okinawa? The same ship. Same ship? Yeah, yeah. Same now, what, what, after you got through the Panama Canal, you said that uh, you had taken on a couple of PT boats right. and their crew. Yeah, and crew. then where did you go from there? Uh, well, we didn't know there was secret. Uh, they said they couldn't, you had to be so many miles out before they can open it. That's so they said in there. And they said we're heading for the Philippines. And, uh, we uh, went there and dropped off the Philippines uh, PT boats, but they couldn't drop them off the PT boats because the harbors had sunken ships on, on the wharfs where they would normally unload them or anything unloading. So they had to somehow get a big a floating barge with a crane on to take them off there and then put them on the, in the water. Do you remember what port or harbor that was that had all the sunken ships that you tried yeah, to? Yeah, that's um, Taplogan. Tap what was it? Tap Taplogan. Taplogan? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's at the head of the Gulf there. So anyhow, that uh, and from then on, we headed to China. Seventh Fleet was in 
Tsingtao, China, and we headed there, and they, they gave some of their equipment. In the meantime, when we was in the Philippines, we had all kinds of LSTs, LMMs, and all kinds of different navies. We was the auxiliary of the Navy at that time, and we carried the supplies there. We did had small arm ammunition, some small arm, all kinds of uh, equipment, uh, uh, wrenches and pliers and everything, and knives and everything that they needed to repair their different things. When and you traveled to and fro, did were you in convoys or were you by yourself? No, no uh, we didn't have to be in convoys at that time since uh, uh, the Japanese surrendered a month uh, sooner. But there was a few stragglers out there in the ocean in Pacific yet. All right. But in uh, the Atlantic now, they, they've sunk so many ships that they had to, the only way they could get over there uh, safe uh, would be in convoys. They had to protect them or they wouldn't have got no, nothing to Great Britain or nothing to Russia in there. But a few of the ships they needed right away and couldn't get a convoy. And some of those ships made it over the Mediterranean or over there. And others, they never heard from them. And a lot of them, they didn't hear from them until after they captured the German subs and their records and stuff like that. Told of them sinking this ship and that ship All right. in there. So, yeah, I got uh, drawings in there of how many ships uh, were sunk right off of the Florida coast and Chesapeake Bay and New York Harbor and so forth. Oh, okay. And I've got that there. And they, uh, and this I hate to say it, but it's another thing, but Admiral King was in charge of the Navy along the coast there. And he refused to turn, have blackouts along the coast. So the U boats, they can see a merchant ship at night, the, the lights were behind the merchant ships. So they sink them right then and there. So that's uh, one of those things. But there was, at the time, I don't know just who told me on that, but there was out there, and I think it's in the record somewhere, some I should kill Admiral Kane because he wouldn't declare black, blackout. So that's one of those things that happened in the war. Well, by, by the time you got over to the Philippines, uh, had the Japanese surrendered yet? Yeah, they was a month before in uh, uh, Missouri there. All right. They surrendered then. And, uh, but they still some ships around. When we went over, uh, just uh, about near Guam, our ship broke down. They blew a head gasket. And uh, they, uh, we was laid there for about four days there before they got that head gasket. Uh, put on in, uh, in there. But the Navy said they would keep an eye out for us. And if we saw any subs, they get a hold of them. But the only thing I know that they did, they saw a couple floating uh, mines, and they reported the position to the Navy on those. Whatever happened, I don't know. OK. So it's, uh, it's interesting. So but where, where uh, you were headed towards Guam, you were you were laid up there in Guam for four days, and then what happened to your well, ship, and what happened to you? Well, we just still the like, same old thing, you know. Uh, we had to run the ship and so forth. And where did you go? Well, we went to the Philippines and dropped those off. After and, after Guam or before? Oh, this well, Guam is on the way back. We stopped at Guam to get to what we couldn't get rid of. They stopped at. Uh, was up the headquarters was up in uh, Sing Tao, Sing Sing or Sing Tao, and uh, there we, uh, Chiang Kai Shek was 20 miles out, of the, and it was getting louder and louder each day. They were getting closer and closer, so they had abandoned uh, Sing Tao there, and we stopped up at Sing Sing, and uh, it was all well. Uh, I never saw anything but the whole muddy water. Uh -huh. Everything was muddy there, and only the captain was taken there. What what they happened there, I don't know. And then we went to Korea, up in the 
Korea there and stopped there and again I never saw anything and the funny part about it, I'm down in the engine room so I never see nothing you know you don't see you know, when you come in port when you leave you don't see nothing so, so oh, what, what was your what was your duty on the uh, well, Ben Robertson? It, well, Ben Robertson, I was first as a wiper. They start everybody out there, and then at the end, I was a third class uh, fireman in there. All right. So, uh, they, so where did you go from Korea? Korea. Then we went to Guam, and uh, we picked up uh, a jeep. They were they were uh, in Guam. They were big cliff on the one side of Guam and they was running the tanks and everything over rather than bring them back. They was there and they also were running and making a harbor and we would put the vessel, uh, jeeps and the tanks and everything there. And then one guy won the Navy, he wanted one of those jeeps and we decided to take that to the Hawaii for him. We stopped there in Maui, Hawaii. So the military were just making artificial reefs out there? Yeah, they were. Making and, harbors? Yeah, all kinds of different uh, equipment and stuff like that. And uh, they, they did made a pretty good harbor out of it. Oh. Right there. When you came back, where did you come back to? Well, that's the thing. We from uh, Port Wyanemi, California. And uh, this is a nice little town, but the funny part about it, when you land at a port somewhere, you're off ship. In other words, uh, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, we got an Atlantic, and now we're being dropped off here in the Pacific, and we got no way to get there, other than what little we made on there. And that took, I think, $365 for some guys that were in the Army, had an Army transport, and we had to pay him or them to take us to Chicago. And it was just two seats on the side, no heat in it or nothing. A little blanket, that it was cold. Nothing of us. Steel seats and everything is along the thing. And then I had to pay them to get to uh, Fort Wayne and then from Fort Wayne to Dayton. And all that come out of my pockets. So that took Oh, almost a fourth of uh, what I made that year uh -huh. in there. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those things that. So from California to Chicago to Fort Wayne to Dayton, right. all of that was by train. No, 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 no. That was the planes. Oh, planes. Planes until I got in Dayton, then I got into a, a bus or into Dayton. All right. No, we had to pay for that in there. What kind of a what kind of a plane was it that uh, you came? I, I can't remember. All I know is this: an old army uh, paratroopers or something where they sat along there and uh, DC three or DC four or C forty seven. I don't remember. Uh, all I know is it just had back from a, a big seat on both sides from one to the back. All right. That's it. And I guess that's the uh, for the paratroopers or something to get up and go out. When, when, when you uh, got back to Dayton, uh, had you mustered out by that time? Were you re no, released from no, duty? No, I still have, I was still had two years uh, to finish. Still had two I, more years? Well, not two more, no. But uh, they were supposed to have eight years. They put on there, if you notice, they got eight years on here. And they released me down here to the here it's from military duty. They didn't really release me at all. I was supposed to be eight, eight years more in uh, the reserves. So if something in another war would have came, I automatically had to go there. So that was eight years service under Universal Military Training and Service Act. Right. All right. So when did you finally get out of uh, service at that time when we well I've got a, a discharge papers in here somewhere on that releasing the eight years I don't know where it's at so I don't think I put it in there it might be Is it one of those no 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 there's it's a regular discharge paper something like this or thing release from active duty 
Okay, yeah, this is here and discharge, I believe. See, after the eight years. So what did you do for the balance of the time after you got back here to Dayton? Right. You still have to be in the active reserve. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what did you do during that period? Nothing, because I didn't go. So I didn't go. They, I figured that when the war would come, they'd call me, and that's it. But, um, but did you get a job when you came back? Yeah, but that, uh, after walking the streets and finding out uh, whether somebody uh, looked in the papers and things like that, and nothing there, I saw that it could get do uh, in there. But I uh, went, and the, the, I remember going to the different uh, plants and stuff like that, and I was there, went to NCR, and uh, they said they weren't hiring, they didn't have nobody, uh, need anybody. And then I went to some others, and I thought, well, I'll go back to NCR and a couple of different places again and see if there's any change. And the guy says, um, when I come back, he says, boy, he says, you come back, so you must need a job. He says, I'll hire you. So no. NCR is the National Cash Register right, for right. somebody that might not know Dayton. Right, right. National, and and right. what did you do uh, when you went to work at National? Well, I um, put, they put me on a job there of making little fingers for the cash register. I had to assemble them all together there. And they said they haven't had anybody that really was good at it to really do those. And uh, they was, I think, making around 60 a day, and they needed about 120, 100 to 120 a day. So I uh, figured a way out and figured what I had to do. And before long, I figured a, a simple way to do it. And I made 150 a day, but then I start putting 25 in the bin here and keep building it up there. <clears throat> but after I was able to do that, and the guy says, well, he says, oh, uh, you want to learn on the gear and hob and uh, cam machines? And I said, sure. And they put me on the hob machines, and they was always breaking down. And things like that and having problems. So uh, he said, well, he said, I'll put you on this other machine and you can make up for what you're not making here. It was all piecework. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, it was all piecework. And then when they got the gear and hob, I guess they changed some of the registers where they didn't need certain parts there. And they put me on filing. And on filing, boy, you, they gave me jobs that all kinds of different things you had to file off birds and stuff like that. But they had some old timers in there. And they knew what was so simple that they could work an hour and have their whole day and walk around the plant and stuff like that. Here I wasn't even making anything. I said, I'm going to get out of this. I don't get any better than this. So. Yeah, that's uh, one of those things. So did you, how long did you work at National Cash Register? I worked for about two years there. And then where did you go? Well, I was building a house for one. I wanted to get some time on that. And then I would, uh, I was trying to get some different jobs. And uh, I'm looking back now, I'm glad I didn't get those. But uh, they, they end up going broke. Things what? like that, but then when the war came on for the Korean War, then I had to, uh, we picked a, that we went in, just drafted and went in the Army. Well, before, we, before we talk about that, uh, are you married yet uh, when yeah. you're building that house? Yeah. Okay, when did you get married? Um, 1950, wait a minute now, I gotta stop and think of that because that, that ended up in uh, a divorce because I worked uh, 
Red Burning Ice Cream Plant is where I was working and I worked at night so then <clears throat> that's the time that uh, he met this other guy and so sometimes I get home before she, they, he'd drop her off about a block or two away in there so we, that put the end to that. So uh, what but was the your wife I got now where it's going to be our 67th anniversary. Oh great congratulations. Right. Yeah. Well, what was your up. first wife's name? First name? Uh, let me stop and think. I'm, I, I don't want to make this a test. I know. <laughs> I know. Well I am starting to forget some things and some things I want to forget. Um, you asked me too quick. I well, did, to did that. you and your first wife have any children? No. All right. No. But she she got pregnant by this guy, though. Okay. And when we got divorced, she didn't appear at the divorce court because she was out. All right. <laughs> so. So um, you, you get your divorce, and uh, you said you worked at the cash a couple of years, and you were working on uh, working on building the house. Right. Uh, you mentioned you work for an ice cream plant. Yeah, Borden's uh, ice cream plant. Where was Red that? Red Ring Ice Cream, right in South Maine. Okay, here yeah. in, Day in Dayton. Yeah, right, right. And they were just getting out of the pop business at that time, and uh, they were going to ice cream. And Borden's took them over, and became Borden instead of Red Ring Ice Cream. It's Borden's Red Ring Ice Cream plant. Right now, you mentioned you were drafted uh, to go into the Korean War. Right, right. And when was that? That was in 1952. In 52, okay. Right. Uh, so, how old were you then? 20, well, I, I was 26, I think, at the time. Okay. All right. So, April 24th of 52? Right, yeah. And where, where did you, when you were drafted, where did you report? What? Uh, well, they, uh, we went to the Second Army, which is in Baltimore. That was their headquarters. And uh, they shipped us up to uh, Sheepshead Bay. So you're back uh, in Sheepshead well, Bay again? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. They shipped us up to um, uh, Aberdeen Proving Ground. Okay. That's, that's where they shipped us to, and that's when we started in the school and stuff like that. All right. And I become a teacher. And I passed it, uh, the course there so well that they decided I, they need me to teach the other recruits. So they kept you stateside instead of sending you over right, to combat. Right, right. And what were you teaching? Uh, bomb disposal. Yeah. That's to learn how to render safe procedures. Okay. On there. All right. And, and was uh, that at Aberdeen? That's at Aberdeen, right. Did you stay at Aberdeen all that time? Yeah, up right. until I was discharged, yeah. And when right. were you discharged from Aberdeen? Um, I think in April uh, 54. So oh. what, was your, what was your rank when you went in? Well, I was the rank just PFC. And when you when got I out? I out as sergeant. All right. See if you see it on there that... Now what... Uh, uh, what kind of uh, honors or certificates did you get uh, for your military service, either uh, in 45, 46, or in the Korean conflict? Well, I've, I've got a bunch of papers that they really gave me all kinds of uh, accommodations and recognition. I don't have it there. I got that in there, I think, in there. But uh, they got, were, got an Atlantic War Zone medal. Yes. Pacific War Zone medal. Right. That's the Second World War. Yeah. Right. The Atlantic War Zone medal was that in the Korea? Well, they they were still uh, the Japanese was all the way along the, all the way down to uh, uh, Argentina. The Germans, you know, were in Argentina real heavy down there. And they would go in the different ports. They, they sunk ships. 
You'll have to see where they sunk the ships at. If you want me to get that out. I'll get it out and go from there. Okay. Yep. Upside down. Okay, uh, uh, James, we're back on uh, the record here, and I'm showing a photograph here, and who did you tell me this was a that photograph? That was my sister and uh, me. You're the little boy on the right? Right, right. All right, and uh, that was, uh, your, your sister's name was Mary? Mary, right. All right. Then uh, got another photo here, yeah. and that's you and who? That's uh, my son. Uh, Mike. And that uniform is what? Uh, mm -hmm. That Second World War? Yeah, th this would be the Korean War. Okay. Yeah, I see Sergeant. All right. Okay. So this, this photograph we're showing here right. is uh, when you were in the Korean War. Right. And your rank was Sergeant. Right. Now, this, this last photo I'm going to show uh, you've got a uniform on, and is that uh, World War II or is that Korea? That's ro no, that's real World War II. Uh, two. And your that's the Navy uni mar maritime uniform. All right. Okay. Now, were those, were those uniforms supplied to you, or did yes, you have to buy no, them? No, they were supplied. Right. Yeah. Now, you've also uh, brought with you, and, and these aren't going to show very well, but no. uh, just looking at these dates, uh, about the mer merchant ships sunk by U-boats in the Atlantic, right. we can see that there were not very many along the uh, coast of the U.S., some up on well, Newfoundland But this, that time that showed, this showed two different ones here. This was in 41. Right. See? That was, now that, that was between March and December of 41. Okay. Then between December of 41 yeah, and yeah. July of 42, you're right. There's See, just, they start coming there, this way, the U-boats. There's dozens and dozens right. uh, sunk along can, the coast. Can you believe that many ships sunk there? And in the, in the Gulf. Right. In the Gulf. the Gulf. Right. And that continued, but to a lesser extent, but uh, between August 1 of 42 and May of 43, right. there's, there's an awful lot sunk along Right, the even down the South America, the right. North part, right, and also up toward Iceland right. and Greenland, right. there was an awful lot uh, sunk. Yeah, this is on the Mermast run here. This is down at the uh, Cape, down at uh, Africa. Africa. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I the mean, ju people can't believe there's that many ships sunk. Well, what? What? You never had any. Uh, you never had any problems when, when you were on, on the merchant ships. No, that's the reason I think I'm protected. And, and of course, uh, you spent uh, your time in the Korean War up at Aberdeen. Right. And then when did you get out of the service? In, in, uh, t two years later. 54? Uh, 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 yeah, in 54. Okay, now, uh, you know, you, you came back and we talked about you working at the... Uh, um, at the dairy, at the mm -hmm. ice cream place, right. and then how long did you work there? About two years there. And then where did you go? Sir. Uh, well, that was ice cream place was before Korea. Right. After Korea, right. where did you go? Oh, well, after Korea. Um, okay, I went with uh, Kielsen uh, Vending. Uh, they were the not too far from the plant there. And the reason I, uh, they, are, they already said it wouldn't be the Second World War, I mean the Korean War, wouldn't be like the others, the veterans would have a, a job when they got back. They didn't have to walk the streets. But when I went back to get my job back from the Korean War, the guy said, you're supposed to notify us six months ahead of time. 
So therefore, they they couldn't hire me. Didn't have no job or nothing for me. So what then what did you what did you tell him? <laughs> what could you tell me? Well, did, did you tell him that you didn't know when the war was going to be over? Well, I didn't tell him that, but that's what it amounted to. And they mentioned that in that their uh, Veterans Day that they got. I'd like to get that their uh, copy of that that they had there. All right. What? Uh, what? How long did you work for the vending company? Vending company was about probably about two years. And then what did you do? That's a good question. Let's see where to go from there. At some point, you oh, started. Oh, I, I went in business for myself. That's right. what it was. And yeah. what kind of what kind of work did you do for yourself? Well, we started off in um, a little coin shop, and then I figured it wasn't paying enough or to, to keep it going. So then I got into the engraving business and uh, branched out that and the shop just becomes small compared to the engraving but then today engraving is just about dead because on a lot of things they don't engrave like they used to. A lot of companies say well we give the people enough bonuses now that we didn't have to give them anything more or pay them enough. All right. So, so when uh, so you eventually got out of the coins and engraving business? Right. And right. When, did, when did you stop doing we that? We stopped that and started uh, real heavy about last April. Oh, just last April? Yeah. And we closed. It was closed by October in there. So now I'm not working. I'm retired. Right. So, but we didn't make enough on, uh, on Social Security. We're paupers now. Where do we have to live on that or nothing. Where Where do you live now? That's Spring Valley. Spring Valley, and that's in Greene County. Right, in Ohio. And um, how long have you lived in Green in Spring Since Valley? Since '69. Since '69. Right. All the time you've been married, you've lived in the Spring Valley. Right. Uh, well, it wouldn't be all the time. It'd be after the kids were just about. Sixth grade, seventh grade, they're up in there. They went to Spring Valley School there. Today they don't have any. It's Green County. They had to go all the way into Green County. It. Uh, so you got a you got a son. Where is he located? Oh, he's down there somewhere down there in Pass Lebanon. There. Uh, Kings Island or somewhere. Down around Kings there. Mill or? Some, somewhere in there. All right. What does he do? Nothing right now. Is he retired? Not really. Not really. He's going to take a, got different offers of jobs, so don't know. And your Just daughters, that. you've got two girls. Mm hmm And I think you told me one of them lives in the Spring Valley? Right. No. Well, I got one, but she's uh, not... Uh, He's uh, on the board of uh, Green County um, Agriculture, the fair, and there. And the other one's in the medical uh, field, and but she's currently uh, out right now. She's looking for a different one. What was she? Was she a nurse, or did she was she office? She working? never was a nurse. She was pretty good on uh, uh, people and, and their records and stuff like that. Uh, it's more of an office person? Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> do you ever go to any reunions uh, for merchant uh, marines or the Coast Guard or anybody? There ain't hardly anybody around. There's only a few of us left, it seems like. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you communicate with any of uh, the old friends, if there's any left? No. And I, you told me that uh, about 10 years ago you had a nice experience going over to Washington. Right. Uh, well, right. Was that the honor flight? Honor flight. Right. That's the only thing I think I 
can that I got from the World War II. I never even got a thank you from anybody or anything else. Well, uh, your release from the military uh, back in those days was uh, certainly a lot different than what I understand for the fellows coming back right. from uh, Vietnam. Big difference. Yeah. Big difference. Was there anything, anything else you'd like to tell us about your uh, career in, uh, uh, after World War II or in uh, Korea, the your work in Aberdeen? Well, all I know is one thing that they had different people tried to get us a bonus or something. Uh, but all those people up in Washington and things like that, yeah, they're for themselves. They could care less. And uh, you're talking about a bonus uh, with the merchant marines, right? Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't think we'll ever get it. Uh, for one, I'm reading some of the things in there. Is uh, by some of the guys said since the civilians, part of the merchant marines, the civilians, that. They don't want to give the civilians anything, any medals or anything like that. So that knocks their, uh, us out that we're in it. We had the uniforms and were official in the military. Okay. Okay. So, but I have uh, an attorney in the VA that he says he will try to get me a bonus on being the, from the records I got of the Coast Guard. All right. Hey, I mean that shouldn't have, because there's some civilians on the old timers shouldn't knock me out of getting any bonus. But they use that word merchant marine. The word merchant means people that do that for a living, you know, and shipping and stuff like that. Right. So, uh, but that's that's not what I did. <laughs> we put our life on the line just like anybody else. Well, what uh, when when you were in the, uh, the the merchant marines or in the coast guard, uh, did you have a rank? What what was your rank when you went in? In in uh, coast guard. Yeah. The only thing I went was from wiper to uh, uh, third class fireman. Fireman third class. All right. In there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you for okay. this interview. Okay. All right. I want to okay. thank you for your service. Okay. And uh, wish you good health. Okay. Thank you.